Hello fellow scientists, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. So if you like the sounds loud, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and let me know from where in the world you hail from and your top wish list plant because in front of me, I've officially knocked off number one wish list plant but he's not looking too good. So in this video, I'm going to go over what you can expect when you're ordering plants online and maybe how to fix some of those issues, but when those issues are not fixable and the plant is probably gonna lose some leaves or more. So in front of me, I have a tiger tooth philodendron and I know to a lot of people this plant isn't special. To me it is. This is, by the way, no fault of the company that I got this from. This is my fault for having a day job, not just, you know, being a plant hoarder on YouTube. So because I have a day job, he came in the mail when it was 41 degrees Celsius. I'll put what that is in Fahrenheit here. And he cooked. Definitely cooked. So this is what he looks like and I'm just gonna show you a kind of a view of him. Again, not the fault of the company I bought it from. So this is what he looks like right now. This is what some of his leaves look like, but underneath there's, you know, he's healthy, he's happy, and my main stalk is not damaged. So. Let's just go over what we're looking for in a plant when it comes to the mail and we think it could be damaged or it could have been harmed in some way. So wilting from plants in the mail is completely normal. That is a normal thing to happen. And the reason why it happens is usually because plants respire. Plants have a metabolical response that causes them to respire, which causes them to essentially sweat. And that respiration is very valuable. It's equally as valuable as photosynthesis, but not as often talked about. So when a plant is in a package, it's going to respire and that will cause wilt, especially if it is not able to respire at a normal rate that is natural to it when there's proper airflow. So because it's respiring in a package, the humidity in the package is very high but the vacu vacuoles that hold the water and actually cause something called turgor pressure in the plant are also getting full at the same time and they're not able to respire into an atmosphere that's already fully saturated. So wilting is normal. That is a completely normal part of something that's been shipped. One of the best ways to reduce this is actually through a cutting or an unpotted plant, but that's not always the case. So that is normal, wilting is normal. Another very normal response for a plant to have would be floppy stems. And again, that has to go back to the turgor pressure and the organ called a vacuole that is inside the plant cells that actually is regulated. The pressure within that is regulated to help the plant either, you know, have a stem that is firmer or weaker. And again, it all has to do with respiration and the fact that it's in a package. What is not normal is very, very floppy leaves. And how to tell the difference between just something that's simply been shipped and had issues with respiration in the shipping versus something that is completely toast is actually very evident on a plant. So I'm actually gonna pull some of these leaves off because these leaves aren't gonna make it, but it's going to make it easier for me to show you guys. So let's just give some of these a yank because as much, and leaving these leaves on, like leaving leaves like this on the plant is actually, um, it's, there's no benefit to it. You're going to get more pests. It's going to potentially tax your good leaves that you do have. Um, and then the other issue with leaving these leaves on is the plant's going to try to repair them if possible. And it's just way too much energy and way too much focus on leaves that are not salvageable. And we'll go over why these leaves aren't salvageable and how to tell if yours aren't as well. So I'm just gonna take these off and you'll see how much I'm taking off this plant. 
I gotta say this over and over again because I feel bad not saying it. This is not the fault of the company I got this off of. This is the fault of Mother Nature and the fact that I have a day job. It literally sat in heat that these plants, no plant is meant to sit in, so. Okay, so that's how much I took off. I'm going to, I really shouldn't leave this one. It's toast, but I want to leave it. <laughs> what do I do? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it. It's toast, but I'm hoping the whole leaf isn't toast. Like maybe just this portion will die, but this portion up here will be fine. I mean, it would survive without it. It's just that there's more than one plant in here. So I want to leave some ability to photosynthesize. So that's how many leaves I took off. I took off this whole front end, um, but you can see I've got lots of healthy leaves here. I have, you know, I'm seeing a lot of potential for new growth. He will be fine. He will be fine, but let's take a look at the leaves that I did take off. So this is one of the leaves I took off and I want you to notice something in particular. So the front of the leaf, you can see kind of this staining almost. It's like a reddish stain, but if you flip it over, you can see a little bit more on this side, this side, right in here. And then that'll be on all these leaves. So again, we've got, and they're very, see how they're very, you know, localized. And then on this side, again, we've got like kind of that muddled look. And what this is, is actually considered edema. So see how this whole stem is very dark. And again, it looks like I dropped like a liquid on it. See how it's like this and this. And anyone who lives in Canada is gonna be like, well, that looks like frostbite. That doesn't look like it was in plus 40. And it's because the same thing happens actually when your plant has been frostbitten compared to when it's been shipped in the mail and it's been at plus 40, um, the same thing happens. So what happened to this plant is something called edema. And essentially the vacuoles inside of the plant cell have exploded. That explosion causes almost like a blister or a wetting look. In this case, it's a very wetting look. And when those vacuoles explode, that plant cell is completely dead. Now, not every vacuole exploded in this plant, thank goodness, but if a majority of the plant cells in that leaf's vacuoles have exploded, it's not going to be able to regulate its trigger pressure and it's going to cause a wilting effect. These are not fixable. Unfortunately, once a vacuole explodes and edema happens, then there's no fixing it. And again, frostbite can do this, the plant being susceptible to frost, but also extreme heat. And the reason why this happened in extreme heat for this uh, tiger tooth philodendron is actually because when it was in the package, it was trying to sweat and it was trying to get rid of as much of its excess heat as possible. But what was happening is the bag or the box was filling up with more and more water. So the rate in which the water was being taken up into the plant versus expelled from the plant didn't balance. And because there was no balance, what ended up happening is we ended up with exploded cells and those exploded cells are not repairable. So because it's so integral to making leaves stand up straight, the turgor pressure is so integral to that. Um, once this happens, we end up with leaves that literally can flop almost any which way we want it to. So you need to cut them off. It is not repairable. Now, like I said, wilting is normal and a normal wilt uh, would be kind of what the tip of this leaf is going through. I'm probably I'm gonna have to cut this off. There's no way it's gonna make it, but um, see where there's the staining, but then see where there's this right here, how it's like, um, how it's like you can crumple it, but it's fine type texture. 
That is a normal wilt. There's no blistering in this end. There's no vacuoles that have exploded. Um, but just below that, you can see, I wish my camera would pick this up better, but see that reddish kind of stain or that brownish, it kind of looks gray on the camera actually. We'll see what it looks like when I edit it, but that is an exploded vacuole. So um, the best solution to help fix this plant is actually to let it dry out. And the reason why is I want my vacuoles that are really, really full to kind of dissipate um, and a lot of that water to be respired out so I can reset the balance. So I've had him now for three days and his soil is very dry, but I'm gonna continue to allow it to be dry. Um, I've also put him in a shady spot in the house, away from direct light, away from even bright indirect light, just to give him time to recuperate and kind of reset his metabolism. Um, and then probably around midweek, so about a week after I got him, I will then put him in kind of his permanent place in the house and then also give him some water. So right now he's very dry and you can see it in his soil. I'll just take him out of his cover pot here. So you can see his soil is really dry in here and that's what I want it to be for right now. Um, I may hold off watering him till I figure out what these two leaves are gonna do. I have some very mild edema on these guys. So I have a little spot right here. And I have another spot kind of, oh, you're not gonna be able to see this, I don't think. It's like right on the corner here. So, and then I've got another one right here, kind of right there. So I want to wait and see what happens with those two main fronds. I hope I don't have to pat, um, cut them away all the way. Generally, after three days, if it if the vacuole is gonna explode, it, it's already exploded because he's been in room temperature now. Again, out of the sun, haven't been watering him, so it's not like he has any water to uptake to cause any vacuole explosion. Yeah, so that's essentially what I'm gonna do. I've never ordered plants online. I don't think this is the norm for online plants and how they come. This again, wasn't the fault of the company who shipped it to me. This is the fault of having a daytime job. So I'm going to continue to order plants online. And as I get them, and if anything funny or abnormal happens with them, what I'll do is I will actually post it um, and I'll do a video on it. But for right now, this is kind of the only issue I've run into is this edema. Um, I'm not really sure what else could happen. If you guys have order plants online and something funky has gone on with them, um, if you could find me on Instagram or Facebook and actually send me a video, I actually, or, or, or in photos, I actually like doing videos on other people's plants and scenarios as well. Just because I'm only one person and I'm not filthy rich, so I can't, aim to get every single scenario in my home. So I'm kind of relying on you guys and um, some of the experiences you've had to send me photos so I can actually share them with everyone in this community of gardening in Canada or plant keeping in Canada. And you don't have to be Canadian to send me photos. Anyone can do it. I do not mind. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're excited for the indoor planting that's coming. This is kind of, I've said this in video before, but this is like my winter hobby. I find it much more slow paced, you know, just as rewarding, but much more relaxing. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.